Welcome to Coming to the Table. I'm your host, Tony Lewis. Coming to the Table is going to focus on everything that's hot in D.C. From politics to social issues to sports and definitely music. Today's guest, D.C. recording artist Gary the Chosen One, is going to talk to us about his career, the streets of D.C., and where he plans to take the hip-hop music scene. So grab a chair and meet me at the table. Welcome back to Coming to the Table. I'm now joined by DC recording artist Garvey the Chosen One. Garvey has been killing world star hip hop. He's opened concerts for Young Jeezy. He's done songs with Yo Gotti. And now he's here to talk to us about what's next for him and how he plans to take DC hip hop on a national level. Welcome, Garvey. How you doing? How you doing, bro? I'm good, man. For those out there that don't know you, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you represent. Well, first of all, man, you know, my name is Garvey, the chosen one. Uh, I do music in, in Washington, D.C. Uh, I represent a cause and a movement that's out here. Uh, I'm just basically working hard trying to get this thing to crack. Yeah. You know, the codes that we got to break in order for us to be successful in the music business. Yeah, it's been pretty hard for a lot of D.C. artists to, to, to break. And the words that you use into mainstream um, for mainstream media. Um, tell me what you think. What's your thoughts on the state of DC hip hop? Well, at this point, it's getting much better, man. I'm starting to love what I'm hearing from around the city, man. Because you know, at one point it was horrible, but now it's getting better. The the competition is stiffening up, so you know. That's all. That's a good look for the city. Yeah, I think, and you know, before you came, me listening to your music, um, um, you know, your lyrics. You know, I see, I see you as being very lyrical, and you also represent the streets. Um, what you think your perception is in the streets of DC? Do you think you call yourself the chosen one? Right. Um, do you think the streets have chosen you to be the, their representative? I mean, well, they gave me the name, the streets. Yeah. You know, yeah. I ain't make that up for myself. The streets gave me the name, man. That's how we got to where we are today. Right. Um, coming from D.C., a city that's synonymous with go-go music, um, who were your influences to make you want to take the hip-hop lane? Well, you know, uh, first of all, go-go. Believe it or not, because, like, just that whole thing, that whole sound, mm -hmm. just the liveness of it, yeah. you know, it yeah. gives you that whole thing, you know, that whole vibe. Right. And then, you know, also, Los Carlos from Backyard Man. Yeah. He actually was already doing hip hop along with the go-go. Right. So, you know, I was I was listening to him and I was checking him out and this guy really did it. So he really was one of the reasons I really got into it. Yeah, he's definitely like a pioneer and, and a lot of people I don't think Los gets the credit that he deserves. Yeah. Um so um Los Garvey just shouted you out. Yeah, um, shout out to my man any, Los. Man. Anybody else on a, on a national level that you looked up to um as it relates to music? On a national level? Yeah. Oh man, you know what well, you know the list goes on, man, because you know, basically uh I listen to hip hop from all angles of the world, wherever it's coming from. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want the truth and the message. Mm -hmm. Once I can feel that, then you got me as a fan. And being though I do music now, I really listen to everybody. Mm -hmm. Like I don't limit myself to down south or east coast or west coast. If you got it, you got it. Yeah. If you get if you can get my attention, then that's cool. And I and I love artists that's from all over, I just like you know I come up off the West Coast music, right? Yeah, and, and the, the West Coast music, of course, um, always represented the streets and really right. they birthed what we call gangster rap. Right. Um, I see a lot of similarities in that in, in your music, and I see music as a whole is taking a turn kind of towards not necessarily gangster rap but more reality rap. Right. Um, what can a listener look for in your music? What they, what are they gonna hear from the chosen one when they pop in your CD? I mean the truth. 
Like, everything is organic. It comes from the heart. It's either uh, I've been through it or I've seen it. Somebody around me, you know, going through a certain situation. And I might just speak on it. Everything is from the heart, though. It's all, you know, it's my passion and my pain. And, you know, I just put it in music. Okay. Um, one of the biggest records in music this year um, was uh, Rick Ross's BMF record. Right. Um, oh, oh, what, what would be classified definitely as a street record. Right. Um, and locally in D.C., uh, you know, the city was on fire this summer. You took that record mm. and, and, and kind of... Well, just talk to people. What did you do with that record? You remixed that record, but talk to the people about what you did with that record. I basically, you know, when I first heard the record, it, was, it had just came out. So I really heard it, and, and I felt like it was people in Washington who set certain standards out here that wasn't getting represented like they supposed to through the music. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you know, I took the whole concept and I just represented for some guys that, you know, <clears throat> I heard a lot about people that I knew that, you know, looked up to and... I want to represent for them to let them know that they still their names still live on out there. Yeah, and, and being um, living in DC, and, and, and of course being able to feel that the effect that that song had on the streets, and, right. and and how the impact that it had, it, it went above the streets. Like even in clubs in DC, historically a lot of DC records don't get spent in DC clubs, right. and people were going in the club and hearing the DC version of the BM BMF record. Um, I'm sure that had to make you feel pretty good. Yeah, because you know, at the end of the day, everybody well acquainted with the story. You know, they yeah. know. Yeah. Tony Lewis, Wayne Perry. Right. Even if you're not from Washington, you know the story. Yeah. I mean, the people that I looked up to, it was a certain standard that they held they, themselves to. So what I do is I work super hard and I want whoever come after me out of this city to do the same thing. And we'll be able to get far. There's nothing nobody can tell us. Because, you know, in D.C., we got so many talented people out there. Absolutely. You just got to, you know, get, you got to get to the masses. Okay. All right, we're going to take a quick break, Garvey, and then when we come back, we're going to talk about what you think about what's going on in the streets of D.C. That's what's up. We'll be right back.